That brings us to scenario three. 50% of vested ISOs to be exercised in tax year 2020 and 50% of vested ISOs to be exercised in tax year 2021. Now, we're going to assume that the tax withholding amounts and other tax rules are the same in 2021 as they are in 2020. So a lot of these amounts are going to be similar. We want to see, though, the overall effect of spacing out the exercise of ISOs over multiple tax years as opposed to taking it all in one year. You'll see it's quite a big difference just in terms of timing. Now, we then assume that the federal amounts withheld for 2020 are going to be 41,413, same in 2021. These are the same numbers that we had here in the beginning scenario before we started exercising anything whatsoever. Now, those are going to be the withholdings for 200 grand of wages. Then we have to add in the AMT effect. So again, we're exercising 50% of the vested ISOs in 2020, 50% in 2021. That could be a difference of a few days if you're thinking December 2020 and January 2021, but there's significant tax savings possibly available. And taking a look at the bargain element for 2020, it's going to be the 97,000. So let's go ahead and add that in. We had the 194. We're changing it to half of that, which is 97,000. Let's see what happens on the return. Now we see that we owe an additional 17,775. And if we assume that that's going to be the case also for 2021, then you can see that the total additional tax liability in excess of withholdings is going to be the 35,000 550. Now, contrast that to the 44,935 and you'll see that the difference in federal income tax liability is $9,385. Why is that? Well, part of it has to do with the fact that that AMT exemption applies every year and the more years over which we can use it, that gives us more possible bargain element that's not going to trigger AMT for us. So, that's one of the important factors at play is that the exemption is helping us when we space out the ISO exercises, whereas if you lump it all in a particular year, you're only getting one year's exemption, meaning you exercise over two years, now you're able to use double the exemption amount, technically. So that's really what's going on, and it's a huge tax benefit for very little in terms of the adjustment in how you're approaching the ISOs. But the big thing to keep in mind is the fair market value per share is assumed to remain unchanged in tax year 2021. That's a big assumption. Sometimes when you're dealing with ISOs, the fair market value can fluctuate pretty significantly. But that's an assumption we're taking into account just to keep things constant, just so we can compare apples to apples and see the differences in terms of how the taxes play out. To summarize, we saw that the scenario one disqualifying disposition added an additional $67,540 in tax liability, which you're not going to get back. There's no AMT implication here. So this there's no AMT credit associated with the disqualified disposition scenario in this case. So $67,540, you are never going to see it back. Now we go to scenario two, 100% of the vested ISOs exercised in tax year 2020. You have an additional tax implication of 44935 that you're going to get back at some point, substantially all of it or all of it altogether. So huge difference there. 67540 you'll never see again. 44935 that you should see again come back to you in the form of the AMT credit. Let's compare that to a difference in timing from one tax year to the other. Now we're spacing out our ISO exercises and we can save $9,385 and that could be a difference of a few days in terms of spacing out the exercises. So usually there's room to optimize in this area and to really make sure that we're getting the most bang for our buck in terms of getting through this AMT scenario. Finally, we could take a look at scenario four and we could see that this is a scenario in which 70% of the vested ISOs are going to be exercised in tax year 2020 and 30% will be exercised in 2021. Now, the withholding amounts are going to be the same in both years, assuming that we still have 200,000 wages in each year. And 70% of the ISOs exercised in 2020, 30% in 2021. And the total applicable bargain element is going to be basically either the 70% or the 30% of the 194,000 amount. All right. So let's take a look. Let's take this 135, 800 and incorporate that here. Again, we're using 2019, but we're assuming that this is actually tax year 2020. Let's go back to the return. We have 200,000 in income. Everything's good there. And the additional amount of tax liability we're calculating 
in excess of the withholdings is 28,639, which we have right here. Similarly, for 2021, we're assuming this much in the bargain element for AMT purposes. Let's go ahead and model that out. It's going to be 7,077. And the total then becomes 35,716. And you'll see that it's not much different from scenario three, but there are a few benefits to this that we need to take into account. One of those being that the fair market value per share is assumed to remain unchanged in tax year 2021. But what if it increases? If it increases, then you're going to have more bargain element to contend with. And as I mentioned before, we want to make sure we utilize as much of the 26% rate as possible and not get into the 28% rate unnecessarily. So this is going to give us some more breathing room in terms of, let's say, maximizing our 26% rate in 2020 and then leaving room for some increases in the fair market value of the shares, which will increase the bargain element in 2021. So we're trying to build in a cushion for possible future uncertainty. Add to that the fact that we have a new presidential administration that's going to be effective in 2021. So what are they going to do to the AMT rules? I don't think anybody knows in this case, but that also gives us room if the thresholds for AMT are lowered all of a sudden, which means that it applies to more taxpayers and at lower amounts of income, we still have some room to breathe there if that should apply. So there are some benefits in terms of optimizing your scenarios for AMT purposes. And you could see that even making a few different tweaks in terms of timing and the amounts of ISOs that you exercise in a particular year can have pretty significant implications for you down the line. And add to that the AMT credit and how that's going to play out. There's a whole lot of opportunities for planning. As you can see here, this could be a difference of a week and you could save more than $9,000 in upfront AMT payments just by optimizing things and being smart with how you approach alternative minimum tax implications. In this video, we covered the grant and exercise of ISOs and the effects that that can have on your taxes. The next question becomes, what happens when you sell the shares that you obtain through the exercise of ISOs? That is a great question, and that's something I'm going to cover in a subsequent video because I think that at this point, we've had enough ISO, AMT, all this other alphabet soup, right? So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos as soon as they're released. And if you have an interesting question, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I love reading your questions. And if it's interesting, I'm going to make a video answering it just like this one. With that said, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.